Live from the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, it's The Q at the HGST Press and Industry Analyst Briefing. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HGST. Here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live at the Sheridan Palace in downtown San Francisco at the HGST Press and Analyst Day. I'm joined today by my co-host, Stu Miniman. Hey Jeff, uh, th thanks for having me. And uh, we're going to be doing an intro here, talking about a lot of announcements that HGST ha have made, uh, talking about uh, some of the, the big innovations in, in storage, talking about what's going on in hard drives, uh, with, with flash, uh, with software. And uh, David Floyer is going to help us you know, tease apart all of these announcements. But uh, j just to give our audience a, a little bit of a framework for what we're talking about here, uh, of course, the, the storage industry is going through you know, massive amounts of change. Uh, things like Flash have been really uh, allowing for new opportunities uh, in, in new architectures over the last uh, about six years. Uh, but it, it's not only about Flash because uh, you, we, we have greater capacity uh, needs. So uh, th th there were some announcements today that we're going to dig through uh, talking about uh, the capacity and then there's ones that talk about performance. Um, but if I, if I think back about 15 years ago, uh, Jeff, um, we, we really saw storage go outside of the server. We created a network uh, 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 storage, basically SAN storage attached networks and NAS, the uh, file uh, attached uh, networks, and there was a creation of an entire stack of software to pull all these services together, you make it create utilization. Uh, and over the last really you know few years, we've seen uh, things being pulled back into the server because we have a lot more power in our cores, uh, in our compute standpoint, and Flash is making us want to pull things closer to the application, which means that the, the storage needs to be near the compute. Uh, earlier this year, uh, David Floyer and I put out what we call the server SAN architecture. And what this does is a lot of the value that you saw from network storage being pulled into the compute layer, leveraging Flash, and, and even more importantly, leveraging software to create those new services. Uh, one of the big announcements here from HGST is what they called a uh, flash fabric, which really meshes nicely with our vision of where we see the data center going. Uh, so uh, we're going to have a lot of good guests. We've got uh, you know the, the president of HGST. We've got some analysts that are going to tease through the numbers, uh, the various division heads uh, to talk through all of these pieces and explain to our audience you know why this is uh, a compelling message and important to where the future of storage is going. Uh, at this point, I want to bring in David Floyer, Wikibon's uh, CTO and co-founder, who wrote the market forecast on server SAN. Uh, David, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks, thanks very much indeed. All right, so a lot of announcements here that we have to kind of squint through. What, what kind of stood out for you most in this uh, morning's news? Well, I think there were three major announcements that stood out to me. Uh, first of all, there was the Flash Fabric, as you said, and that's, that's if you like, Server SAN, their first entry into Server SAN, and that's a very exciting uh, drive. Uh, the second is the uh, 10 terabyte announcement of the uh, Helio uh, technology, the helium filled drives. And, and also what was very interesting about that was the, the, the issue that the whole of the marketplace has with the access density to hard drives. Uh, they're using uh, the uh, shingle magnetic recording uh, technology, and that's very good indeed for reads, but for writes, uh, it's a little, a little problematic. So it's, they could, you're going to have to learn how to use this sort of technology in a new way and introduce that. And then the third interesting one was the Active Archive platform. Very, very dense uh, application of technologies and enclosures claiming to be five times uh, more dense than others. Obviously, uh, time will tell, but um, three very interesting technologies uh, in their attempt to uh, revisit the storage of the future. A, a, a new way of doing it, completely different from Seagate. All right, so, so David, you've been quite bullish on flash technologies over the last few years. C can you lay out for us, where are we in the transition from, from disk to flash? Obviously, you know, one does not completely 
obviate the need for the others. So where are we yeah. with the market and where, where do we expect to see things go in the next couple of years? So if we look at uh, Flash, Flash now in, in a straight dollar per uh, gigabyte uh, is for active, uh, active data, warm data, is about equivalent. Uh, it's certainly if you add on compression and deduplication, it becomes actually better than equivalent. So we're, we're at a very much a tipping point where active data is moving very rapidly towards flash. Um, the, the benefits of flash are obviously performance and obviously bandwidth, but it is a, uh, it, it is a, um, uh, it is a, a technology that isn't in any way mechanical. So it takes all the advantages of growing very, very fast indeed. And you saw announcements today of 3.2 terabytes. Uh, those are going to be much, much bigger, and, and the drive sizes of Flash in the future are going to even be bigger than the, uh, the uh, mechanical ones. So, uh, so, so from a price performance, it's coming down in price. It's roughly equivalent. The interesting thing about Flash, though, is it can allows things to be virtual, allows the storage to be virtual for the first time because you've got enough IOPS and you've got enough bandwidth into it to extract the data in many different ways. So the most interesting thing is about Flash is that you can, for example, have a single copy of data and use it for OLTP and you can use it for your... Um, uh, your your uh, 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 archive applications. You could also use it for your uh, inquiry, high high, uh, high big data type applications. All three based on the same data itself. So being shared, a virtual use of that data for many different applications. That again is a mammoth reduction in the amount of data you require. So if you add on the uh, ability to do um, uh, deduplication and, and compression on it and add on this ability to, to virtualize that data and use it for both, uh, uh, both for OLTP and for your data warehouse, you have some amazing reductions in the amount of data that you have to store. So it really is at a tipping point, and I think that HGST has been very, very sensible in doing two things. First of all, separating out flash from the drive, not going down the Seagate route. I think that's exactly right. And the other thing I think they've been very good is they've, they're doubling down. They, they've bought Viridant, they've bought Velabit, they've bought Stack. They're doubling down on, the, on their ability to enter the, the flash market in a big way. Dave, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, uh, earlier in the presentation, Steve Bulligan, president and CEO, talked about this, this transformational time that we're in because of this explosive growth in the data. But really, instead of saying, I'm going to pick a road, they're going down multiple paths at the <laughs> same time and really right. introduce this new concept of something in between, you know, kind of hot active data versus cold store data uh, in this active archive. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about kind of reflections on prior transformational periods and what you think is so different about this one and the path forward? Well, uh, 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 the amount of data is growing massively. Um, it's clearly growing from all the sources they said. Uh, it's growing from mobile. Uh, it's going to grow from the Internet of Things or the uh, industrial internet from all the sensors that are coming out. Um, and, and it's growing from uh, all of those different areas. But um, what's, what's interesting about their strategy is they're covering both bases. And there's clearly a demand for uh, uh, archive, and it's going to be on disk for as long as we can foresee, because uh, you, you want to write it once, and you, you often hope to actually read it never. So it's a worn type device, <laughs> uh, as opposed to a warm data. So um, that type of device they're creating, very, very high density, putting these six terabyte and then eventually 10 terabytes uh, together uh, with uh, their own assembly and their own software around it, and trying to get to a, a much lower uh, power capacity. What's interesting in racks is that power density is the thing that's actually limiting the amount of uh, equipment that you can have in a rack. So that's their strategy there. Very, very promising strategy indeed. 
All right, so, so David, one of the things I found interesting is, uh, you know, where HGST sits in the stack. So obviously they have, uh, they don't make their own NAND, they buy it from a couple of suppliers, and they supply to uh, server, storage, and cloud service providers are, are, are their customers. So some OEMs and the cloud service providers. Um, you asked a question in, in the general audience about just strategically where they fit and how much value they can add. You know, are they the next Veritas? Are they the next EMC? Uh, you know, versus how, how they have to pair with their OEMs. So, you know, what do you think of things that they announced here that they called like device affinity and taking that Viridin software and extending it? Where where is the the room for HDST in the marketplace? That, that I think is the question. I think the first thing they've done is differentiate themselves from Seagate, and they want to add significantly more value. Uh, what happened in the SAN marketplace is that uh, EMC came in, they added uh, 10 times more value per drive uh, to, the, to the drives they bought from Seagate, and they created a, a large marketplace of which they, they, they dominate. They, they dominate from a... From a uh, the number of uh, um, amount of revenue, but even more, they dominate from a profit point of view. So that was their strategy. HDST is trying to keep more of that revenue. Uh, they are investing in software around it in, in much bigger packages, like the Active Archive, very much like the Flash, flash Fabric. Um, the Flash Fabric is a straightforward replacement for SAM. So, they are towing into that marketplace where they are going to be much more of a provider to a broader marketplace. Now, their go-to market strategy is through partners and through OEMs, et cetera, and th that's their stated market strategy. Um, but long-term, most of the revenue can, comes from added value of the stack up the stack, and that's EMC proved that. So they're going to have to dance, in my opinion, a delicate dance between being an OEM supplier and trying to get into some of the higher level things. They want, to, they want to be an OEM supplier at that level. Time will tell how successful that strategy is, but, but uh, it's certainly some, toe, some uh, toe dancing there. But to me, the flash fabric is the most interesting of all. The potential there in that marketplace to replace the server, the SANs with server SAN is very exciting to me. So now that we've started down kind of the flash adoption curve, uh, in hindsight now, do you see it tracking about what you expected? Is it going faster than you expected? H how do you see it kind of mapping out now that you've got a little bit of data? <laughs> well, the, the server sand we, we forecast as being very, very gradual. I think we may, may have been actually uh, too, uh, too uh, non-aggressive in, in our forecast. I think it's actually going to go faster. There is a very, very strong need. The, the biggest constraint on growth are the applications. Applications uh, are the thing that uses data, and you need that appli those applications in place. So uh, the applications they were quoting today, that 75% of new, new applications in the cloud are sort of big data type applications, those are the ones that are going to drive this sort of technology in the beginning. So it's... Uh, uh, clearly, that, that's the cloud is going to be a big driver of this. Enterprises coming up have, first of all, to replace their current applications, which don't need quite the same levels of performance as they did, but they will be driven because the potential of these new applications to drive productivity. There was a quote today of 5% and 6% being better. I, d I, d I believe that's a complete undercall. The potential for in driving productivity by 30% is, is in my opinion what is out there if you combine the uh, data warehouse and the applications, the OLTP applications, and then drive them to replace, unfortunately, large numbers of people that sit in organizations making day-to-day -day, uh, decisions. Right. Those, are going to be rep th those are going to be replaced by data scientists coming up with algorithms that, that replace them. Uh, and that's going to mean a major, major change. That's the thing that Flash is really going to do. And it's very exciting, a bit alarming, but, but it's going to come. Yeah, but at the same time, they talked earlier today that the growth of the data far exceeds the growth of the people that are going to be around to manage it. Exactly. So, in yeah. fact, those guys yeah. might have more stuff to do. <laughs> so, David, thanks for joining us. I'm here very with welcome. Stu. We've got a great lineup coming up. Um, 
with uh, Jeff uh, Janikowicz from IDC, uh, a whole host of execs from HGSD. So we'll be right back with our next segment after this short break.